Bro, I'm tired of being black. I was was having this conversation because I don't even know what black is. I'm confused and shit. And it seems like black has a a, a completely negative connotation to it. So, like you say, I'm tired of being black. I'm tired of being uh, pigeonholed into just being black. Action. I was in uh, H-E-B, and this ain't even no black business. I was in H-E-B. What happened? What happened? What happened? The lady, I asked the lady, I ain't never been in this H-E-B. And mind you, it's about 85% black. Okay. I went in there. I asked the woman where the bathroom was. She popped off of me. Oh, it's down the aisle over there, and you'll see the sign up top. I'm like, dang, Miss Lady, thank you. I appreciate it. But uh, we're going to play a game like guess which race this is. <laughs> you already know what I, it oh, is. Oh, she's black. Yeah, oh, she yeah, was she black. Was like, hey, yeah. I was trying to give her the benefit of the doubt, man. man because say, say, no, it ain't no benefit of the doubt. I'm giving all doubt. Hey, sometimes people be having bad days and they be rude. I'm just saying, customer service ain't always the best all the time. Well, you need to find a new occupation <laughs> because your occupation is dealing with people on a regular basis. But my IQ score tells me that I'm limited to these very specific occupations. She ain't never had no IQ test. Most people never had no IQ test. I'm just saying her aptitude has limited to her in life to what she can do successfully. Well, she need to get some more uh, better thoughts. She need to uh, go to school and, and learn how to deal with people. They need to have, matter of fact, on these jobs. Man, that's a great to, question. Go ahead. They need to have people on these jobs that will give you doggone uh, customer service uh, etiquette. Do you think dumb people should go to school? <laughs> I think dumb people should learn. I, and it, it don't even have to be school. It can be a course, a training, or something like that. It don't have to be. The word dumb is completely subjective because I have to have some, I have to take initiative, be motivated to go learn a thing. If I do not want to learn, I classify that person as a stupid person. I don't even think it's stupid or dumb. I think it's just ignorance. No, because you know the information exists. Ignorance is not knowing. If I know that I have access to the information and I choose not to pursue the information, then, bro, I'm choosing to be, I'm a a big dummy, man. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of American people right now, we just some big old dummies. Big old dummies, because the information is out here. There's more information available right now. But we we rather look at our phones, all that information in our phones, all that Googling we can do, and we rather go look at some ass. I want to get back. You was at H-E-B. You was having this experience with this woman who was having a clearly bad day. And it's, it's when they get overrepresented because I know like, oh, whoa, whoa. we don't know she was having a bad day because she was pretty nice. To, that she was she was <laughs> moseying on along. And when it came to me asking the question, that's when she got uppity. I'm trying to support black women. I'm trying to believe black women. I'm trying, I'm trying to shoot to, black I'm women trying all to the be bell. real. I ain't trying to shoot no bell because that's the problem with today. We shooting a whole lot of bell and it's a whole lot of crime going on. I mean, look, crime is a fact of life, man. I mean, it, I'm, I'm not crime, crime. I mean, like shooting bell. I'm just saying there's a lot of perpetrating that is existing. And I like I know that I have these negative experiences and I try to just let it just because I don't know how to fix a person's bad attitude, bad behavior. I don't even want to approach that because if I try to correct it, then all of a sudden it escalates into something that I don't want it to be. But that goes into changing your occupation because if you know that you're dealing with people on a regular basis, you should have some kind of understanding as to how to deal with people no matter how your day is going. If you need to go in the back and scream, yell, put your face in a pillow, then you need to do that. But when you get out on this floor and you have to deal with customers, then you need to act accordingly. I don't have very high expectations for unskilled labor. <laughs> I, I just don't. I just, I understand that these people, hey, life is hard being poor. Is that an excuse to act like an asshole? I'm not saying Absolutely it's an excuse not. to act like an ass. All I'm saying is I get it. I, I, hey, hey, dear black women, I get it. Black men, they beat you down. The whole society is beating you down. Man, black women is the most oppressed people on the whole entire planet and I just want to tell you I care. I I care about you. I care about you too. I got a black wife. (laughs) But at the same time we need to be real about the situation. This is called pandering. Uh, I see. (laughs) I feel you. Because This is called pandering. Yeah, yeah. And y'all get beat up. Y'all get, it's a whole lot of uh, beating up on the black women. But what about when we get beat up on? Hey, uh, we strong men. We'll fight back. Punch you in the mouth. Keep playing with me. Get on your uh, strap up your pull up your bootstraps. Hey, hey, hey. Be a man. We have to be strategic individuals. Like the way we having this conversation, I know who I, the person you're talking about. I could see her in my brain. Oh yeah. I didn't had this experience over and over again. Absolutely. Hey, bro. I'm I'm gonna let that I'm gonna let that situation stay exactly where it's at because I know where exactly where I'm trying to go. 
far away from that. Far away. I feel that. <laughs> I feel that. But I just had to speak up on it because it's like going back to black business. We we expect black people to support black business just because they're black and we're not getting anything in return. Now, mind you, there are white businesses who are who are on the same scale, but shouldn't we as black people hold a higher standard for ourselves? I think the whole ideology and methodology is just absolutely wrong. You know how like Jews really dominate in the entertainment industry. They don't say Jew owned business. Exactly. They don't say that. A lot of the times they're gonna name it something uh ambiguous so you don't even know. You who don't even owns know what it. it is, yeah. I want black folks to do just wonderful business in yeah, period. Absolutely. And so when you tell me it's a black owned business, I'm like, don't I don't even know what that means. Yeah, are you yeah. telling me that all black businesses operate the exact same way? Because if that's the case, then if you got shitty ass service, that tells I may, me. That I may expect the same thing from all black businesses. All black businesses. That's going to be the standard. Bro, I'm tired of being black. I Man, was, was having this conversation because yeah. I don't even know what black is. I'm confused and yeah. shit. And it seems like black has a, a, a completely negative connotation to it. So, like you say, I'm tired of being black. So I'm that, tired of being uh, pigeonholed into just being black. Why can't I be an American? I, I, look, and I say that, and all of a sudden, some black folks is fucking going, just losing all your oh, air yeah. in your lungs. Oh, yeah. gasping. <gasps> I can't believe he said it. said that. Yeah. And it's because of your dumb ass. Yeah. Like, fuck. No I, accountability for your actions. I think black folks are smart, brilliant, have the aptitude to go and achieve anything that's possible. But we see a whole lot of dumb ones out here. But you don't go and just be a success. Like, I don't want to hear no first black astronaut. I don't want to hear no first I'm black so president. I'm sick of the first black whatever it is. Why does that even matter? To Why who? can't you just be excellent? Just and not be even excellent. and then the whole black excellence thing. What does that mean? Hey, cuz they say representation matters. I don't need to see a black doctor to know that I went to I the can doctor. Be a doctor. Yeah, yeah. The <laughs> shit. I don't need to go see a black ast astronomer for me to know that the stars in the sky. Yeah. Like we playing these stupid ass games these and we games. getting stupid ass prizes. You like to mark Everything is about marketing and branding. And so if I tell you to market the black brand as being excellent and, and to do a w amazing job at all times, then that raises the standard. But that's you don't want that to be the standard. You want the standard to be twerking. And I'm like, man, fuck all that. Yeah, because uh, the things that we do best is the things that are the most undesirable. If twerking is black, I don't want to be black. I don't want to be black. <laughs> if robbing and stealing is black, I don't want to be black. Bro, I, whatever the narrative was, I'm not no little kid no more. Yeah. When I was a little kid, Tupac and Biggie were phenomenal. Young Jeezy, yeah, hands all in that. The air. Yeah, yeah. yeah. T.I. the trap music, all of that. Uh, uh, all of the the man, cause I come from Georgia, so all of that trap music. That's what we came up on. We thought that was just what it is. And then I got a little older and I started listening to these actual rappers. And then uh, it, when uh, T.I. came out with his show and all the stuff he was doing after that, I started really listening to what they're saying in their personal lives. And a lot of that should be bull jive. I don't want to hear that. I'm wishing death upon myself. You yeah. know, everyone's doing positive affirmations. Negative affirmations are also real. Absolutely. And most of the time, they're not even said. They're just acted upon. Murder, death, kill, murder, death, kill, yeah. fuck a bitch, fuck a bitch. Yeah. Murder, death, kill. Fuck you hoes. Now roll a blunt. Yeah. Murder, death, kill, uh -huh. as I smoke this blunt. <laughs> I'm in the hood. I done rolled down on my... When you think about uh, a sonnet, there's a structure to a sonnet. There's a structure for a haiku. Like, there's a structure to art. Rap is just like a free verse. And you whatever. You say whatever. Just whatever. The rhyme That's why they made matter. it to 16. Because they don't... That's why Ben Shapiro just went uh, viral, viral and for, platinum. Yeah. Because... It ain't got no structure to yeah. it. You can do a or whole say bunch anything. of rhyming words. Hey, and that's what that's what the black identity is right now. Like that's what our uh, leadership has perpetuated. Is the black identity is you can just do or say whatever. Whatever. You ain't got no accountability. Nothing. It's very much no similar structure to, to, to no feminism. Discipline. Yeah. Feminism is like the exact same ideology. There's zero accountability. You can just do or say whatever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't you know that you were oppressed? Don't you know that you were a victim? And I'm not trying to erase history. I'm saying that we have to use history to make um, incremental improvements for our, for our social economic experience. But we're so stuck in the past that we can't get. And I, and I don't want to. I don't want y'all to get it missing true when I say get past the past. But God dog, we need to do something. There has to be something that we look forward to and stop worrying about what's behind us. Yes and no simultaneously. Everything that happened to my people in America, that is a political uh, agenda. Like, we have to have a political party to go and demand 
some type of reprove, repro- God damn it, reparations, motherfucker. Right. I'm trying to run away from it. <laughs> Hell no. Ain't no other word, yeah, man. Yeah, stand on business. Shit. Yeah. Like, every other group, because I'm an American. I love all of Americans. I, I served in the military with other people who look different than me. And whenever they had any type of plight, I'm, I understand. Sometimes life can be really hard. When it comes to the plight of the black man in America, y'all be like, man, fuck me. And I'm looking at you like, how, how can I support every movement in America when it comes to supporting black people? you like, get over it. Now, when it comes to reparations, I'm kind of on the fence with that. Like, I understand your perspective on it as, as to all of the, the things that happened to... Every group of people when they had an and injustice, that, they I, got yeah. repaid for that injustice. But for me, just for me, I ain't speaking for nobody else. I don't feel like I deserve reparations for me. You can have that position for millions of people who had the atrocity of being the descendants of slaves. I think they feel very differently. We we've lived in apartheid in America since all the way up until 1965. We just got actual freedom in America 60 years ago. But on the other on the other end of that, I do feel like we deserve something. I I guess the whole reparations was throwing me off. But I, I think I, it's, the, I, it's the marketing of what it is, bro. A debt is owed. These people owe us a debt. And when I say that, y'all look at me so angry. Every, y'all wrote laws to discriminate against my people. Yeah. And when I say my people, I can't say black because everybody black ain't a descendant ain't, of a slave in America. Absolutely. Hi, I am. My great grand my great great grandfather was a slave. Yeah, my great grandfather, my, my grandfather worked on a plantation. I, I have a little bit of both. So my Mexican side of the family, my mother's side, they actually were on their on they stuff and they had people that were up under them. I wouldn't say necessarily slaves. Right, right. But they did have people up under them. And then um, on my father's side, they were uh, they were slaves. So I'm kind of on both sides of it. Like, did you see? um What's her name? That woman on The View? Wow. I'm 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 in a little bit in shock. I, I just always thought of myself as Puerto Rican, you know, half Puerto Rican. <laughs> I didn't think I was uh, my family was originally from Spain and slaveholders. <laughs> <laughs> she just found that she her whole premise is we deserve reparations and all of this. And she was thinking that she was a uh, Puerto Rican or uh, from somewhere out. in uh, But she came to find out that her people were actual slave owners. Okay. And they moved from Spain to Puerto Rico to uh, they moved themselves and all of their slaves to Puerto Rico to continue uh, slavery because it was abolished in Spain. And she just figured this out. Now, her whole premise, her whole uh, talking points is we deserve reparations. So my in my mind, I'm thinking, does she now think that she needs to pay some? Because we're asking this of... Th- actual descendants of slave owners without having an actual political organization like on youtube there's a lady named yvette carnell uh there's a man uh, named tone doing tone talks these are youtube channels that talk about reparations it's not a skin color thing it's a lineage thing if you can trace back to your great great grandfather great great grandmother mm-hmm. that you're an actual slave and this is where the conversation starts based on actual political activity all this subjective stuff it's very hard to so do. So where would the things. reparations come from? Who's go, who's directly, who you think should be directly responsible for paying it? Who's paying for Ukraine? I got you. The government. Okay, like like everyone gets money when it comes to giving black people money. We say, well, where's the money going to come from? The same place you give all, everyone else this money. Yeah, even the doggone, uh, the immigrants that they're giving it to right now. I say Ukraine very specifically. We're going to get right back to those immigrants because y'all coming over here and y'all claiming to be people of color and the, the actual people of color don't get no benefits from being people of yeah, color. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. They it's didn't not change up the, 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 the definition of people of color. The population of Ukraine is about the exact same as the population of black America. And we gave them bit, billions of dollars. And continue to. And then we look at black people in America in their face and say, you don't deserve nothing. And y'all stand on that. I read the comments. I hear y'all in the real world. Y'all, like. I have no inferiority complex, but you do have a superiority complex when you look at me and think that my pain, my history, my great, my great, great grandfather, my lineage doesn't matter to America. We and, built America. Brother. And in my comments on uh, the Stocker family, people tell me that you weren't a slave. You haven't been through anything and all of those th- and stuff like that. But when I when I for me, when I say we, I mean, as as people of color, I mean, black people are descendants of Africa. 
that's what I mean by we. I don't mean me specifically because we all know there's nobody alive right now who was directly affected by. I like to I like to dive like it, because if you go just if you just say slavery, you're talking about 250, 300 years. But if you start with the Civil Rights Act of 1965, then we just ended the apartheid state 60 years, man. Like we lived in actual segregation in the most yeah. powerful nation in the world. And to acknowledge that reality is taboo in America. We support everyone else's group, but everyone. we don't support our group. Yeah, That's because we ain't got no political unity. We're not, like, we let everyone co-opt our movement, and we sit there, and we ain't got nothing. Yeah, And that's strategic, and that's tactical. And I, 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 love, I love black people. I love America. And that creates an interesting duality, because does America love me, and do black people love me? And it's questionable on both ends. If I don't sit there and agree with either faction wholeheartedly, they look at me like I'm some type of bastard child. Yeah. No, nigga, I'm the son of America. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. America made this motherfucker. Mm. And y'all looking at me like, I can't believe that motherfucker. I can't believe he's entitled. <laughs> I'm entitled to the ability to fight for freedom. And whatever that looks like is different for all people. And now if your message resonates with a large group of people and they say, man, I agree with that idea of freedom, they come be the greatest American alive, Absolutely. man. Straight up. <laughs> you are the greatest American alive. Because <laughs> I think liberation is always supposed to be the goal. But when you start accepting victimhood or victimhood ideologies, it's very hard to get liberated. But that's what they say to people like us who are speaking up on it. They think, I look, when I say they, it's abstract. If there's any person in America who thinks you're, you're owed reparations, then guess what? You have to be willing to fight for reparations. <laughs> you have to you have to rage against the machine for the machine to respond to you. Mm -hmm. I've seen other groups do it. I watched the gay movement. In 30 years, they were able to achieve political action that we weren't able to achieve. Less than 30 years. I'm just I'm just saying. Yeah. I saw it in my lifetime. It went from yeah. being illegal to being legal. Yeah. Yeah. And I just want to see the actualization of the black person in America. And if any American is offended that a, an actual American wants to overcome the apartheid system that America created, then get mad. But you know understand history and have a conversation about how we improve the quality of and life. And don't, don't, don't try to call me something. Uh, don't call me out of my name because I'm speaking up on it. Because if more people speak, spoke up on it, then we would have an actual conversation as to how we can make things different. But since everyone is going at everybody talking about you this or you this, then we're going to stay divided. And I think that's a part of the plan is to keep people divided, divide and conquer. We all know the, the old saying, uh, why can't we come together and start moving as a unit and maybe we'll get some results that we're looking for. Me wanting justice should not offend you. That's true. I'm just, and, and, and you wanting me to understand your historical position, that doesn't offend me. I'm listening. Yeah. I love America. I love Americans. Please tell me your story. Tell me tell me where our lives intersect. And at that intersection point is where we can work together to also rage against the machine. Mm -hmm. Because as we fight like racial ideology, we're also fighting the class war. Absolutely. And we can't even have a conversation about the class war because... You, because we, we're so stuck on race. <laughs> race and God doggone all these other perversions that are happening to our society. And all this stuff is... And this is where we like... The responsibility of men is to dial in, be disciplined, and to change the attitude of a culture through action. Absolutely. And so is our responsibility greater than a woman's responsibility? Hell yeah. Why? Because you got the physical capacity to you do got more the than she can. Yeah, the physicality. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, you, got, you got the want inside of yourself to go and fight for this thing, bro. Like, I can hear it. I can see it. Like, there's a mission that was put inside of you to go accomplish a purpose. And when you reach all of your full potential... And there's some little black boy in America. He might not need no representation, but to know that Mr. Stalker did it, God damn it, I can do it too. Hell yeah. That, that's how represent, representation matters. Hell yeah. yeah. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive.